Okay, class, today we have a very special guest. This is Ken Burns, and he makes documentaries. Hi, everybody. Hi! What's a documentary? Great question. A documentary is a movie that tells a true story and uses real people instead of actors. Want to hear about the one I'm making now? Sure. It's about pets. Do any of you have a pet? How about you? What kind of pet do you have? A puppy. His name's Clifford. He's lots of fun. He's always ready to play. And he's my best friend. Now I can tell. I love pets too. That's why I decided to do a documentary about them. Are you having fun making your documentary? I am, but it's also a lot of hard work. Which you're about to find out. Huh? Huh? This month, you're going to take turns using the school's video camera to make your own documentaries. We oh, are? <laughs> that sounds so cool. <laughs> I'm glad you think so, Shun. Why don't you, Emily, Elizabeth, and Nina go first? Oh, wow. Oh, I can't wait. All right. The first thing you need to do is decide what your documentary will be about. Remember, it should be something that's really important to you. Well, we all really love our pets. That's a great idea, Emily Elizabeth. But since Mr. Burns is already doing that topic, maybe you should try something else? But you're on the right track. What else do you three really care about? Hmm. We love our neighborhood. The people are great. Hey, that's it. Our documentary can be about the people in our neighborhood. Great idea. First, we can talk to Mr. Solomon at his art studio. Oh, and then Miss Grouse at the pet store. <gasps> and wouldn't it be fun to visit the bakery? You sound like a natural producer. I do? Oh, that's great. What's a producer? The producer is like a team leader. They plan the documentary and make sure everybody knows what to do. That sounds like Nina, all right. She loves planning stuff. How do you like that camera, Shun? Oh, it's awesome! Then maybe you should be the camera person. Okay. Camera person. <laughs> what should my job be? What do you like to do? Well, I, I love to read. That's perfect. It is? You can be the interviewer. That means you read about your subject and write down important questions to ask people. Okay, that sounds great. Well, it looks like you three are ready to go. Okay, Clifford, I've read a lot of books about people's jobs. Now I need to practice asking questions. So you pretend to be Mr. Solomon. Ruff, ruff. Okay, how long have you been painting? Ruff, 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 ruff. I see. And what is it about painting that you like the most? <laughs> Great answer. Nice talking with you, Mr. Solomon. Now. Let's see what it looks like if I turn the camera like this. Cool. Now let's see if I dim the lights. Ugh, very cool. I've gotta remember that. Okay, this is everything I need to keep things organized. A stopwatch to keep us on schedule. An alarm clock to make sure we don't take too long. And, in case I have to talk to any large groups of people, a megaphone! Jorge, that's my schedule. Oh. 
Okay, you can sleep there, but tomorrow morning I'm going to need a bath. What's the name of the book you're working on? Flo and Zoe and Who They Know. I think that... Wait a second. What's wrong? I think the light could be better. I did this thing last night in my room, and it was really neat. So, Mr. Solomon, hold it! It's still not quite right. Uh, Shun, don't, don't you think this is too... You're right. It's still too bright. Shun, I don't think Mr. Solomon can see the animals. And we can't see Mr. Solomon. <laughs> okay, that might be too dark. Oops. I'm sorry we didn't have enough time to do the interview with Mr. Solomon. I'll leave the lights alone this time. And I'll make sure we don't fall behind schedule again. We better get started right now. Are you ready to begin the interview, Ms. Grouse? Well, I sure am. Oh, this should be fun. <laughs> sorry, I'll get that. <laughs> I'm all set. <laughs> okay, quiet on the set. Hold still, hold still. Okay, guys, this one has got to work. And action! So, what are you making? A giant Hawaiian wedding cake. It's my own special recipe. Mmm, that sounds delicious. It's time for the eggs. We need seven eggs. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. How many years have you had this bakery? Three, four, five, six, seven. Was that three years or three eggs? Uh, what? Uh, years, I think. Now I must put in six cups of pineapple. That's one, two, three. How many layers will this cake have? Two. Three, four, five, six cups of pineapple. Oh, I'm sorry. Was that two layers of cake or two cups of pineapple? I don't know. <sighs> but, but now it's time to mix it all up. Oh, I think maybe there are a few extra ingredients in there. Zero. What a disaster. We spent all day working on our documentary. But have nothing to show for it. Look at Clifford. He's trying to get close to those butterflies. I can't believe how quiet he's being. And how still. I know. He's not disturbing them at all. I wish we'd acted more like Clifford today when we were filming. Then I wouldn't have turned the lights off on Mr. Solomon. I would have left them just the way they were. And I wouldn't have taken all those loud things into the pet shop. The noise really upset all the animals. How about me? I asked so many questions, the cake got ruined. All we cared about was what we were doing. We didn't even think about anyone else. 
Well, we do have the camera for another day. How about we give it another try? Oh, great idea, Shun. Right, but this time we'll be more like Clifford. And now for the most important part, the candles. Do you think my customer will be happy with their birthday cake? Thanks, Emily, Elizabeth, Shun, and Nina. That was a terrific documentary. I could tell just by watching how much you care about your neighbors. Do you think the project helped you learn more about them? <laughs> it sure did. And you know, I think we also learned a little bit more about ourselves, too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> A great story. Today's story is Speckle and the Made Up Rules. One afternoon, Speckle invited all his friends over. He had a new board game and couldn't wait to share it. But when they opened the box, they couldn't find any rules, and no one knew how to play. Then, Speckle had a great idea. The group could make up their own rules for the game. <laughs> Robbie spun a three, so he had to make the funniest face he possibly could. <laughs> and when Speckle landed on a green square, his challenge was to juggle. <laughs> or at least try to. It was so much fun, they played for the rest of the afternoon, enjoying the rules and the game that they all made up together. The end. I love reading stories together. You know, Clifford, for such a small dog, you sure are a big reader. <laughs> Babysitter. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Coming to you, Emily Elizabeth. Oh, oops. <laughs> Great play, Evan. <laughs> Just call me Alan Houston. Why? Alan Houston? He's only one of the greatest guards ever. And guess what, guys? I'm gonna get to see him play. Wow! You got tickets? Where did you get those, Evan? From Coach Davis. He's old friends with Alan Houston. He gave me these tickets because I scored the winning basket in today's game. How lucky is that? <laughs> well, I guess that makes you lucky too, Emily Elizabeth because you're going with me. I am? Sure, you've always been my biggest fan. The least I could do is treat you to a game. Hooray! Make a good basketball player too, Clifford. Now let's see. What else do I need for the game? Maybe a sweater. That's Evan. Time to go. So long, Clifford. <laughs> Hello there. Hello! Look at all 
all the fans. And the building is so big. Uh-huh. It's pretty cool. Tickets? Hey, aren't you a little cutie? Um, thanks. Hmm, gee, everyone is so friendly around here. <laughs> right this way. Here you go. Wow, these are great seats, Evan. Right behind the bench. And here they come. Yeah! <laughs> hey, I don't see Alan Houston. Alan Houston is my hero, and we're sitting right behind him. Boy, this is perfect. Clifford? Clifford? You're not supposed to be here. Now we'll have to take him home before we get in trouble. No, Evan, look. That little girl has a puppy with her, too. Hey, that's Alan Houston's daughter, Remy. She goes to all the games with her mom. Hi, I'm Emily Elizabeth, and this is Clifford. I'm Remy. This is Hoops. And my name is Evan. Wow, Remy, it looks like you made some new friends. That's Evan. Oh, you must be Coach Davis's player. He told me you'd be here tonight. Do you want to sit with us during the game? Okay. That'd be great, because her mom isn't here. She's home with a bad cold. Usually, she sits with Remy during the games and keeps her company. Oh, don't worry. We'll keep Remy company. My friend Evan babysits me all the time. He's so much fun. Right, Evan? Huh? I told Alan Houston that we would keep Remy company during the game. Are you sure you don't mind? Mind? Evan? Uh, uh oh, oh, uh, sure, no problem. Thanks, I appreciate it. Have a great time, okay? Okay, Daddy. You too, Hoops. Wow, I just spoke to Alan Houston. <laughs> I know. Such a great game. Do you want to play clap, clap, clap? Clap, clap? Uh, sure, if you show me how. <laughs> You're pretty good at this, Remy. <laughs> what happened? Alan just stole the ball from the other team and scored a basket. He missed it. Oh, well. That's okay. He'll make a lot more great plays tonight. I'll see the next one. Sorry, I didn't want to step on your toes. Just excuse me. What happened? Alan Houston just hit a basket from outside for three points. He did? Well, and that's okay. There's still plenty of time. You guys stick around here, okay? You want a hot dog, Remy? With mustard? Emily Elizabeth, how about a hot dog? Sure, Evan. Thanks. Three hot dogs, please. 
coming right up. Here you go. Thanks. Oh, Remy wants mustard. Wow! Allie Houston just made a perfect alley oop pass. What a great play! Hey, you got some mustard on your shirt there, Chief. going on in this game. It's really exciting. The game is tied with only two seconds left. Really? I hope Alan gets the ball. Me too. Alan's got the ball. He's gonna shoot. Yay, Daddy! Oh, oh, oh! Wow, what a great game. Thanks for inviting me, Evan. No problem. Daddy! Did you have fun today? Yes. Thanks for keeping Remy company. It looks like she had a great time. I hope you enjoyed the game. Uh, sure, it was great. Actually, he missed a lot of it. He was busy helping Remy. Oh, that's too bad. It's okay. I, I guess I can watch basketball anytime. And he can play basketball, too. You should see him. He's great. Oh, I I'm not that good. Oh, yes, he is. All right. How about a little one-on-one? One-on-one? -on -one? One -on -one? With you? Now? Sure, why not? Unless you're too tired. Uh, yes, absolutely, let's do it. Okay, come on. Thanks, Emily Elizabeth. This is one of the greatest nights of my life. Oops. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Thank you too, Clifford. <laughs> are asleep, Clifford. I'm afraid all of this noise will wake them up. When that happens, it's time to show some respect. We're sorry, Mr. Sadarsky. We forgot it was their nap time. Hey, why don't we take the game outside? <laughs> <laughs> oh, playing out here is a lot more fun. Having respect isn't hard at all. Clifford and his friends know that being considerate of others is really easy. And it can make a big difference. That's why Clifford's idea to grow on for today is have respect. Grooming Gloom. Okay, okay, so there I was, flying along, minding my own business, of course, when all of a sudden, this round white bird zooms up right next to me. Well, who was it? What'd you do? I said, well, hello there. I'm Norval, and who might you be? 
But this round white bird doesn't say a word. Oh no, oh no. Then, zoom, she drops down right out of sight. Wow! So, I look down. I see this white bird just lying in the middle of a field. Was she okay? Clifford, I had the same question. So I flew down to see if I could help. Norville, that wasn't a round white bird. It was a baseball. Well, excuse me, what, a, a baseball? Well, I, I guess that could explain why she was so quiet. Hey, guess what, everyone? I'm going to the grooming shop today. Well, uh, that's great, Jorge. Terrific! It sure is. Great. What's a grooming shop? Well, it's, you know, a, a grooming shop where you, uh, you shop for grooming, I guess. Oh. Whatever it is, Nina says I get to go. Grooming is just a fancy word for keeping yourself clean. So and I groom ourselves all the time. We lick our fur clean with our sticky tongues. Oh, is that what I have to do at the grooming shop? Of course not. Only cats can do that. Dogs probably just get a fancy bath with bubbles and stuff. A bath? That's worse than a sticky tongue. No, no, relax there, Jorge. I have seen lots of grooming shops, and I know all about them. This should be good. First, they give you a bath. Well, I guess that won't be too bad. Then... They trim your nails. Oh, that sounds okay. Then, they clip your fur off. <gasps> clip your fur off? That's awful. One time, Nina's baby cousin pulled the fur on my tail, and I didn't like it at all. Don't listen to Norville, Jorge. They don't have babies at grooming shops. Do they, Norville? Well, I, I've seen uh, maybe a one or two. Oh, I don't want to go. I don't want to go to the grooming shop. Don't worry, Jorge. You don't have to go to a shop to get groomed. We can groom you right here. Okay, Jorge, stand right here. Your grooming will begin any minute now. Hey, what's gonna happen? What am I waiting for? Good job! Great! <laughs> that should get him nice and clean. Hey, look at that! The little hot dog is enjoying himself! seen anything like it. Cool. Jorge, what happened to you? Oh my goodness, you're a mess. I'm gonna call the grooming shop right now and see if we can get you in early. This is definitely a grooming emergency. Hmm. Some people just don't appreciate cutting edge fashion. <coughs> oh, now what am I gonna do? Wanna help me play with my squeak burger, Jorge? <sighs> no thanks. Come and play, Jorge! Yeah, you can be on my team! <sighs> no thanks. Hey, excuse me there, kids. Uh, I just want to give this super-sized dog biscuit to my very good buddy, Jorge, here. <laughs> no thanks. Wow. The poor guy is really worried. He turned down a dog biscuit. I don't want to go! Oh, we've got to help him, guys. There must be some way we can keep him from having to go to that grooming shop. I really don't think it's a big deal to go there. He'll be with Nina. I'm sure he'll be fine. Oh, why does my fur have to be neat and clean anyway? Wait! I have a big idea. Maybe if Jorge wore clothes, Nina wouldn't care if his fur was all neat and clean. She wouldn't even be able to see it. That's perfect. 
great idea, Clifford. I still think he should just go to the grooming shop. But if you guys want to try this... Yes! <sighs> Come on, Jorge. We have a plan. You do? Are you dressed yet, Jorge? Um, sort of. Oh, come on out there, hot dog. Do I have to? Yes! yes! Okay. Well, here I am. Woohoo! Yes! You look great, Jorge! What do you think, Daffodil? Uh, well, uh, I like your hat. Oh, I'm gonna go and show Nina right now. <laughs> Jorge, you look adorable. Hey, it worked. Nina thinks he looks adorable. Oh, you are so cute. Of course, I'll have to take all that off before we head off to the grooming shop. I came to tell you that we got your appointment changed. We'll be leaving in just a few minutes. Mwah. You sure do look cute. <laughs> well, now what am I gonna do? There's only one thing left you can do, pal. That's right. Hide! What? No! You're right, Norville. I'm gonna look for a hiding place right now. Norville, what did you tell him to do that for? Daffaloony, I ran out of ideas, okay? How about this idea? We all just make Jorge feel better about going to the grooming shop. But he doesn't want to go. Clifford, Jorge doesn't even know what the grooming shop is. I say that if Nina thinks it's a good place for him to go, then he should go. Gosh, I didn't think of that. Nina would never let anyone hurt Jorge. We should tell him that. But now he's hiding. How will we find him? Oh, just leave it to me. Great hiding place, Jorge. Really? No. Mm, how about now? Uh-uh. No. It's my tail, isn't it? It always gives me away. You know, Jorge, Nina really loves you. Oh, I know that. She'd never take you anywhere that wasn't safe, would she? No, she takes really great care of me all of the time. That's what I thought. So, maybe taking me to the grooming shop is just another way that she takes good care of me? I think you're on to something. I'm sure you're right, but I still don't want to go, Daffodil. So what will you do? Stay out here and hide forever? Right through dinner and breakfast and lunch and stop! You're right. I can't miss lunch. You know, maybe the grooming shop won't be so bad after all. Jorge, where are you? Time to go. Oh, there's Nina. I better go. Good luck, Jorge. Daffodil? Mm hmm? Thanks. You're welcome, Jorge. There you are, boy. Time to go. Oh, poor Jorge. All we can do now is wait and be here for him when he gets back. Jorge is gonna be just fine. Nina will make sure of that. <laughs> okay, everyone. Now remember, we have to be brave for Jorge. Right! Oh, brother. Hi, everyone. What happened? Hi, Jorge. Hey, hey dear, how do I thought the grooming shop is a great place. Norville had it all wrong. Really? What a surprise. Oh, yeah. They treat you really nice there, and they give you a new squeak toy when you're all done. Hungry? I knew that all the time. And don't I look handsome? You sure do. And you smell good, too. So Nina took good care of you, huh, Jorge? Oh, she sure did, Daffodil. I can't believe how worried I let myself get when I didn't even know what a grooming shop was. Well, you know, it's like I always say. You should never jump to conclusions. Nina would never take me any place that wasn't good for me. That's why I'm not a bit worried about my trip to the veterinarian tomorrow for a checkup. Oh, no! Not the veterinarian! Do you know what happens in there? Norville! 
Yes, that's my name. Don't misuse it. Huh? Oh, yeah, well. Well, I don't really know what happens there. But if Nina thinks you should go, then I'm sure it's a good idea. Today's story is Speckle and the Pen Pals. Early one afternoon, Luna went to check her mailbox. Luna said she loved getting mail, but hadn't gotten any letters in a long time. None of them had gotten a letter of their own in a long time either. Then Speckle said he knew how they could all get mail. They could write letters to each other. Luna wrote about the apple tree in her backyard and the day it blossomed with flowers. Reba wrote about her last basketball game and how she scored the winning point. Darnell and Ravi wrote about the great new books they checked out from the library. And Speckle wrote a letter that was all pictures, drawings of every one of his favorite activities. Soon Luna's mailbox was filled with letters, and so were everyone else's. And they enjoyed reading and sharing their very own letters with all of their friends. The end. I love reading stories together. You know, Clifford, for such a small dog, you sure are a big reader. The letter. Clifford. I like the flowered ones. But the black ones are cool, too. They have to be just right. After all, it isn't every day that you get to see a Pogo Sticks concert. <laughs> Clifford, <laughs> they're upside down. <laughs> Silly puppy. It's Evan. See you after the concert, Mom. Okay, honey, have fun. Hey, guys. Hi, Evan. I like your shirt. And I like your shades. Thanks. Clifford helped me pick them out. It's great that the concert is outside so that dogs can come, too. Clifford, are you ready for one of the most incredible music performances of your life? <laughs> Hi, Mr. Solomon. <laughs> Hi, kids. Your cold sounds a lot worse than it did yesterday. Yes, I don't feel too well, but I have to put this letter in the mail today. Well, why don't we mail it for you? That's a great idea. We're going out anyway. Evan and I are going to the park to see the pogo sticks. They're a rock band from Europe. <laughs> yes, Evan, even I know who the pogo sticks are. They're famous. Well, there's no trouble taking your letter. There's a mailbox right outside the park. Oh, thanks, but this letter needs a stamp. I have to take it to the <coughs> post office. Mr. Solomon, we can take it. We have plenty of time to mail your letter and get our tickets, too. Well, thanks. Now, here's some change for the stamp. It's so nice of you kids to do this for me. Oh, no problem. Next stop, post office. Then it's concert, here we come. Uh-oh, looks like Mr. Mian could use some help. He's having trouble with that banner. He'll never reach. <sighs> hey, Mr. Mian, need a hand? I sure do. Maybe if we each take one side. I'll stand back and tell you when it's straight. Hey, where's Clifford? 
Clifford! Whoa! Catch him! <laughs> What's he doing? <laughs> I think he wants a ride. <laughs> well, what do you say, Mr. Mean? <laughs> okay, but carefully. having a great day. First a ride, then a concert. Right, the concert. We have to get going. Is it straight, Emily Elizabeth? A little higher, Evan. That looks just right. Careful, Clifford. Oh, I'm so sorry, Mr. Man. That's okay, it happens all the time. <laughs> there we go. Clifford, now where did that puppy go? <laughs> <laughs> Clifford, what would we do without you? We'd better get going if we're going to mail Mr. Solomon's letter before the concert. Thanks for all your help, kids. No problem. Next stop, post office. Then it's concert, here we come! No, no, no! Oh, come back, y'all! Oh, no, what'll I do? What'll I do? Next stop, pet shop? Sounds like we better. Hello? Quick! The door! Please shut the door! There are bunnies everywhere! <gasps> Hi there, little bunny. Okay, Mr. Bunny, come with me. Seven, eight, nine. Oh, the baby! The baby's missing! Oh, she's just a wee little thing. She's only this big. Clifford, thank you all. I don't know what I would have done if you hadn't come along. I've got to be somewhere in a few minutes. <gasps> so do we. Oh, well, thanks again. No problem. Let's go, Emily Elizabeth. Next stop, post office. Then it's concert, here I'm we... I'm sorry, folks. I'm sorry, folks, but I don't understand what you're saying. They seem lost. Let's see what the deal is. You guys need some help? Uh, well, this group here is from out of town and they're lost, but uh, I can't figure out where it is they need to go. Well, maybe I can help. Let me see the map. The fountain? Are you trying to find the fountain? That's right near the park where the concert is. Oh, so that's what you were trying to ask me. Well, come on, I'll walk you over. Oh, it was no problem. Come on, Emily Elizabeth. Next stop, post office. Then it's concert, here we come. Oh, no. Let's get in line. Clifford! <laughs> Clifford, where did you go? I'm sorry, we can't mail anything with the tail. Ruff, ruff, ruff. Clifford, there you are. Emily Elizabeth, we're next. One stamp, please. Excuse me, we'd like tickets. I'm sorry, we just sold the last two. 
You're sold out? Oh, no! I can't believe it. We've been looking forward to this concert forever. They're letting people in now. That could have been us. I guess we just didn't make it in time. I know, but we'll probably never get another chance to see the Pogo Sticks play in concert. But we did help a lot of people today. Look, it's the Pogo Sticks. Get a good look, because that's about as close as we're ever going to get. What is it, boy? Remember those sunglasses? It's them! The people we helped find the fountain! They were the pogo sticks! Do you think he remembers us? I think he might. And he probably remembers Clifford, too. Hey, the pogo sticks asked me to give these to you. What? For us? Enjoy the show. Thanks. Look! Front row seats! No way! Thank you! We love you! Come on, let's get our seats! Wow, this is awesome! I can't believe we're up so close! Hey, kids! Oh, hey, Mr. Mian! Are you here for the concert, too? You bet! And thanks to you two, I made it on time. You kids hungry? Help yourselves. Really? I brought lots of them from my store. Thanks so much! I just wish I had something for Clifford. Oh, now y'all don't worry, I do. What a cute dog! Well, thank you. I always carry snacks for him. Here, take some for Clifford. Thanks. Oh, no problem. It feels good to help your friends. It really does. Hey, so you guys ready to rock and roll? Ready. Well, here we go. my toe, that's all. It's not really hurt or anything. It's just a little bit sore. But I don't really feel like running anymore. You guys go ahead and play without me. Sometimes the best way you can help a friend is to be kind. And that means being considerate of their feelings. Wait a minute, I got a big idea. Instead of playing tag, what do you say we tell stories? That way everyone can join in, even so. What a great idea. Thanks, Clifford. I'm really happy you found a way to include me. When you take the time to be kind, you can help a friend feel better. That's why Clifford's idea to grow on for today is be kind. Okay, I got one. Once upon a time. Oh, I love it when they start like that. <laughs> <laughs> Adopt a pup. Maybe it's under the rug. We've got to hurry, Clifford. Mom really needs our help at the Adopt a Pup booth today. We're going to find homes for a lot of wonderful dogs like you. <laughs> but first, we have to find my shoe. I'll check the bedroom. Hey there, what's up, little red? Hi, Norville. Wow, that's a great balloon. I got it at the street fair. They're giving them away. Well, this will be my first street fair. Are they fun? Are they fun? He's asking me, are they fun? They're only the most fun ever. 
There, there's all kinds of food there and music, and everybody is out having a good time. Woo! And you're gonna flip! Ho oh, ho! I can't wait. <laughs> Looks like I'm going now. See you at the street fair. Okay, I'll be with Emily Elizabeth Norville. We're finding homes for dogs. I'll drop by. Found it. Ready to go, Clifford. I guess it's okay for you to walk without a leash today, Clifford. The street's blocked off, so there won't be any cars. Hey, check out that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Careful, Clifford. You're gonna make yourself dizzy. Mrs. Howard. Hi, kids. I'm so glad you're here to help. We've got a lot of dogs from the animal shelter counting on us to help them find wonderful new homes. So, what do we do first? Why don't Evan and I set up a spot where people can play with the dogs? And Emily Elizabeth, you can put one pamphlet into each of those doggy bags. Okay. Hi there. Huh? H hello? Oh, hi. I didn't see you. <laughs> that happens a lot. I'm Teacup. My name's Clifford. Are you looking for a home, too? No, I belong to Emily Elizabeth. I'm just here to help. I might find a home today. You must be really excited. I am, <laughs> but I'm a little nervous, too. How come? People come to pick up dogs from the animal shelter, but no one's ever picked me. They usually don't even notice me because I'm so small. Well, I'm sure you'll find a good owner. I mean, Emily Elizabeth picked me and I'm even smaller than you are. <laughs> but I'm full grown. I won't get any bigger than this. Will you? I don't know, but Emily Elizabeth says she'll always love me no matter what size I am. Oh, she sounds nice. Hey, you little redness. Who's your mouse friend? <laughs> Norville? Teacup isn't a mouse. She's a dog. Oh, oh, excuse me there, Teacup. It's just that, you know, you're so uh, little and, and tiny and mousy. And I I'm just making it worse here, aren't I? <laughs> no, it's okay. I know I'm small. But small is good, right? I mean, look at me. Hmm. I'm small, but I think big thoughts. And I do big things. And I've got a big voice! See you around. Wow, the band's really good. A little too good. Everybody's listening to them instead of checking out the dogs. How can we get people to notice them? <laughs> hey, that clown's giving me an idea. Remember how he did that trick with Clifford? Maybe we could do tricks with the dogs, too. Right. Now, let's see. <laughs> I know just what to do with this little fella. something really special to help find you an owner, okay? Teacup. Yeah. I know. Uh, 
excuse me, do you think I could borrow your hat for just a minute? It's for a good cause. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, the hat is completely empty. We place one dog into the hat, and abracadabra, another dog appears. Oh, so cool. <laughs> wait a minute, who's this? I've been wondering where you were. <laughs> Free to a good home, ladies and gentlemen. Free to a good home. Oh, oh, I just have to have that little dog. Isn't he just adorable? Oh, no, that's Clifford. He's my puppy. Here's the dog that needs a home. <laughs> oh, but I wanted the little red dog. Red is my favorite color. Oh, he would look just perfect with my outfits. See? Mm, sure, but Clifford already has a home. What about Teacup? She's a great dog, too. Oh, well, I'm sure she is, but unfortunately, I never wear white. Sorry. Hey, we've still got one great dog here. Free to a good home. It's time to pack up, kids. The street fair's almost over. But what about Teacup? Unfortunately, she'll have to go back to the animal shelter, honey. You hang in there, Teacup. I just know you'll find an owner soon. I'm sorry you didn't find a home today, Teacup. Oh, it's okay, Clifford. The people at the animal shelter are nice, even if none of them are really my owners. Thanks for trying to help me. Well, I wish I could help more. Hey, little Red. Oh, is this a great day or what? Uh, not for Teacup. She didn't find a home. But you gave it your best shot. I mean, what more can you do about it? But I'm sure she doesn't expect you to find her a home. I mean, you only met her a few hours ago. I know, but I really like her, Norval. And I still wish I could help. Me too, kid. Me too. Oh, hi, Miss Chen. Oh, hello, Emily Elizabeth. Hi, Evan. And look who's here. My favorite little red puppy. Ruff, ruff, ruff. <laughs> oh, here you go. That's really nice how you carry around dog treats, even though you don't even own a dog. Oh, I just love dogs. I know who likes my kiwi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go ahead, Clifford. You can play with it. <laughs> Why don't you have your own dog, Miss Chen? I wish I could, but my apartment is just too small for a dog. I would need a dog almost as small as Clifford. And you know how hard it is to find a dog like Clifford. Oh. Clifford? <sighs> Clifford? What are you doing? Come on, Teacup. There's someone I want you to meet. Here you are. And here are your keys, Miss Chin. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, it's no problem. He was just being playful. Ruff, ruff, ruff. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, who's this? Her name's Teacup. Oh, what a wonderful little dog. Oh, she fits right in my hand. And look at these tiny little feet. Oh. Oh, oh, and she's smart, too. Mm, you must make your owner very happy. Oh. Actually, she doesn't have an owner, Miss Chin. Unless... You know, she's almost as small as Clifford. She'd have plenty of room to play in your apartment. I mean, if you want to take her home, that is. If I want to? Oh. Of course I want to. Oh. All right. That's great. Hey, Teacup. You think you'll like living in our building? I think that's a yes. And thanks to Clifford, we've all got a great little new neighbor. Clifford? Ruff. Okay.
Okay, pick one out. <laughs> Thanks, Clifford. This looks like a great story. Today's story is Speckle and the Terrific Tour. One morning, Reba was showing the gang a great book that had pictures of exotic places all over the world. The gang wished they could visit such exciting places. Then Speckle said they could. All they needed was a little bit of help from their imaginations. Speckle pretended he was their conductor and collected everyone's tickets. And once they were seated on the travel train, the tour began. At their first stop, Darnell pointed out a beautiful house in the sky. Ravi and Luna were amazed by the wild sea creature they passed. And Reba loved exploring the untamed jungle and discovering its lovely surprises. When the trip was over, there was only one thing left to do, and that was to thank the conductor for taking them on such a terrific tour. The end. I love reading stories together. You know, Clifford, for such a small dog, you sure are a big reader. <laughs> Joke's on you. So, Clifford, are you sure you don't mind if I borrow a couple of your squeaky toys? Come in handy today at school. All ready for school, Emily Elizabeth? I sure am. It's gonna be a wacky day. Why? It's Wacky Wednesday, the silliest day of the year. It's when all the kids tell jokes and do silly things. You don't say. <laughs> you already knew. Happy Wacky Wednesday, Emily Elizabeth. I thought you might like to borrow these. You bet I do. Thanks, Mom. Emily Elizabeth, wait. Hi, Nina. <laughs> Great glasses. Happy Wacky Wednesday. Happy Wacky Wednesday to you, too. Are you ready for some fun? Oh, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Shun. <laughs> you guys sure look wacky. Look who's talking. Wearing your clothes backwards was a great idea. I'm gonna be the queen of Wacky Wednesday. I've got a bag full of silly surprises. Oh, here, Shun. Would you like a peanut? Sure, thanks. Whoa! Got ya! <laughs> <laughs> All right, if everyone will please take your seats. Um, where would you like us to take them? <laughs> Very funny. But learning is a serious business. <laughs> okay, please sit down. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> well, this is definitely going to be a wacky day. Knock, knock. Who's there? Banana. Banana who? Knock, knock. Who's there? Banana. Banana who? Knock, knock. Who's there? Orange. Orange who? Orange, you glad I didn't say banana? You really got us that time. And I've got lots more where that came from. <laughs> I swapped your sandwich for a rubber one. <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen the look on your face. <laughs> now that's funny. Thanks for the sandwich, but I think I like peanut butter and jelly better. <laughs> Boy, that rubber sandwich joke was great. <laughs> oh, but wait till you see what I've got planned for later. <laughs> Thanks for walking us home from school, Mrs. Flores. 
You're welcome, Emily Elizabeth. Oh, I just remembered. I want to take a picture of you guys with your best gags. That way, I can have a picture from my scrapbook. Wait a minute. Let me put on my glasses. I've got my rubber sandwich. Say Wacky Wednesday. Wacky Wednesday. Oh. Oh, oh. oh my goodness, Nina. That wasn't very nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's okay, Mrs. Flores. That was your best joke yet, Nina. <laughs> I sure wasn't expecting that. <laughs> well, I am the queen of Wacky Wednesday. <laughs> okay, but Wacky Wednesday is over now that school is out. But I still have half a bag of gags left. You can save them for next year. I guess. Boy, I sure am hungry. Are we allowed to have a snack, Shun? Sure. My mom always leaves snacks in the fridge. I'll give you a hand, Shun. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <gasps> oh, no! What is it? Oh, no. Our homework is soaked with milk. It took us almost an hour to write all that. Nina didn't mean to do it. It was an accident. <laughs> if it was an accident, why is she laughing? <laughs> because it's funny. I can't believe you guys fell for that old fake carton of spilled milk. <laughs> See, it's made of plastic. Your homework's fine. Nina, you really made us worry. Oh, you shouldn't take things so seriously. Especially when you're hanging out with the Queen of Wacky Wednesday. <laughs> 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 ruff, ruff. Who is it? It's me, Shun. Hi, Shun. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> I never thought I'd get both of you at the same time. Again? <laughs> I wish I had a real camera to take a picture of you two. <sighs> I'm so funny. I wonder if I could break the world record for the most funny business in one day. Nina, Wacky Wednesday is over. Shun's right, Nina. Enough is enough. Hey, everyone is good at something, and I just happen to be good at silly jokes. Wow, Nina's really out of control. What are we gonna do? I don't know, but I'm really worried that it's going to be Wacky Wednesday all week long. <laughs> I feel silly playing back here. I do too, but what else can we do? If we sit out in the open, Nina's gonna play another one of her jokes on us. I know. Maybe if we're not around, Nina will forget about the whole Wacky Wednesday thing. Not me. It came from behind that tree. Do you think a new kitten is moving to the neighborhood? Jokes on the animals? Ah, oh, you should have seen it. We did see it, Nina, and it wasn't funny. Shun's right. You've taken this joking thing too far. It's just not funny anymore. It was funny to me. 
It's only a good joke if everyone's laughing, not just the person who played the joke. Uh, maybe you're right. Here, take this. It's my last gag, but you can have it. What does it do? Um, well, since you asked... <laughs> Don't! <gasps> oh, no! <laughs> Nina, that's not funny. Clifford has a big blue spot on his side. <laughs> oh, Clifford will be fine. Look. It's disappearing ink, see? So why is Clifford's fur still blue? I, I don't know. It's supposed to disappear. Uh, why won't this come off? I didn't mean for anything bad to happen, honest. Oh, Clifford, don't be sad. I can fix it. I hope. Do you think this is working? I can't tell yet. Oh, Emily Elizabeth. I promise never to play another joke on you again. Or on you, Shun. Or on anybody. Nina, some of your jokes were really funny. Sure. They were lots of fun during Wacky Wednesday. You just didn't stop when Wacky Wednesday ended. I know. I just got so excited. And, and then I ended up turning poor little Clifford blue. I'm so sorry, Emily Elizabeth. It's okay, Nina. Let's see how he's doing. <laughs> Look! He's my small red puppy again! Check out the Queen of Wacky Wednesday. <laughs> I guess I deserve that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you a towel. Thanks. <laughs> Well, Clifford, it looks like you got the biggest laugh after all. <laughs> Clifford? What are you doing? I have a play date in the laundry room with the Sadarskis. I want to share all my favorite toys, but if I move them one by one, I'll spend the whole play date going up and down the stairs. Oh, how about if we help? Sure, if we each carry a few toys. They'd all be in the laundry room in no time. That'd be great. Thanks, guys. Clifford's friends know that it's important to help others. Because when you help someone, you can make their really big job not so big at all. That's why Clifford's idea to grow on for today is help others. Oh, thanks, guys. Now there's just one more thing. Could you help us play with all these toys? You bet! All right! All right! <laughs> 